Hello friends, welcome to the video series of Chess with the Chess Course. I am here with lesson number 4 and the tactic is skewer attack. So first the definition of skewer attack. Basically it's like a pin in reverse. So skewer attack happens when you attack the first chessman along a line which is forced to move leading to the capture of the chessman behind it. When you are doing pinning, the idea was, you know, to attack the first chessman in the line and the first chessman was not in a position to move because it would then lead to capture of the chessman behind it or if it was king, it was like not in a position to move. With the skewer, the idea is to force away the chessman first in the line with an attack, the more valuable and then leading to the capture of second behind it. Let us have a look at a few guiding examples in this tactic. So this is the basic position before you. You can see that bishop on a2 is checking the king and once the king is required to get out of check, say moving to e5, this will lead to capture of the queen on g8. So this was like a basic position. Let us now move ahead to seeing some instructive examples in this tactic. This position was reached by two young kids at under 12 nationals way back in 1995 held at Mumbai. In fact, I was uh, one of the arbiter officiating at that event and I was present on this board when uh, this position occurred. So here black has two rooks as compared to queen of white and you know black was searching for that one final checkmate as he had put the white king in the mating net but was not in a position to deliver the final blow. As you can see both the square that is the square on h7 as well the square on h1 is well in control of the white queen and here you know like uh, black tried to move his rook to g8 that is he was not able to get the mating idea and white you know started giving perpetual check the game soon ended in a draw but here like the player with black missed an easy win what he could have done he could have gone ahead with skewer idea with any of the rook either rook h1 check or rook h7 check let us go ahead with rook h1 check and now what does this move do here white has no way of getting his king out of check excepting by you know like he is forced to capture so after queen into h1 we see king and queen on the same line leading to rh7 check and the king is required to move say king to g4 and on the next move the queen is captured by black let us just go back and we can also examine here rh7 this also leads to the same idea after queen into h7 now the skewer attack comes from rook h1 king is forced to move and after say king g5 the rook is lost. So what is the recurring pattern in skewer attack? Well like pin you can see three pieces on the same line one of attacker and two of defender the in between piece here is forced to move away leading to the capture of the chessman placed behind it. So uh, as like pin skewer can be brought about by line pieces that is rook bishop and queen can do the skewer attack one thing you have to remember it is nothing but pin in reverse let us now go ahead to the next example this is a composition by pedro damiano one of the great 15th century master from Portugal and this position is mentioned in his book which uh, 
you know was published in 1512 and it was it is one of the first chess books uh, uh, like if you can count few chess books which were written first so this was one of the first and this position has been mentioned in that and like the book was so popular that it sold a record uh, eight editions at that point of time remember we move back to you know like 16th century early 16th century and chess so much popular so in this composition by damiano we see a pawn race both are sprinting towards their winning respective winning square it is black to play and we can calculate like black pawn is on f5 white pawn is on a4 and both needs identical four moves uh, for queen to appear so here it's black to play black started with f4 white replied e5 that is the only solution he is not in a position to stop the black pawn so he has to go for his uh, promotion of his own pawn to stay in the race black moved f3 white played a6 f2 a7 f1 equals queen a8 equals queen so both the players have registered same timing in this dash but poor placement of the white king allowed black to bring about a skewer attack there comes queen h1 uh, sorry queen b1 check which forces the king to a file because you know like he does not have any axis on c5 c4 or c3 he is only forced to go to either a3 a4 or a5 and any of this move so here's a king to a5 then comes skewer attack with queen to a a2 check this forces the king to move away from check king to b6 and now black is able to win the queen so i hope you have understood as to how this tactic works let us now move ahead with our next example in this series this is a beautiful composition by joseph kling a 19th century composition he did this in 1849 and it's a beautiful position it appears that black is winning he has queen against two rooks of white and we see deadly threats here like for example here in this position queen is threatening a1 mate and also black king on e3 is threatening to capture the rook on f4 it appears that white is lost but then comes an amazing idea here in this position white plays rook a4 stunning you know is offering his rook free saving the mate trade now let us have options before us we also see in this position that now that once has rook has gone to a4 then you know like white is threatening even rook h3 check and mate because fourth rank is controlled by this rook and the square d2 e2 and f2 by the king so it is checkmate so let us now examine the possibilities for black in this situation he can try for queen into a4 but then this brings about a skewer attack with rook h3 and after king moves out of check say king to f4 there follows rook h4 we see three pieces on the same line and after king gets out of check leading to capture of the queen and reaching an elementary ending let us examine one more possibility for the move rook f rook a4 here as i said like white is threatening rook h3 checkmate black can try queen to c8 with this move he now gets control of h3 square so rook cannot come on h3 to deliver check and mate at the same time he renews the threat of checkmate with queen c1 
and again it appears that white will not be able to parry both this threat but the same idea is repeated white goes ahead with rook h3 check this forces queen into h3 and now the skewer attacks comes from rook a3 so again like king gets out of check leading to the capture of the queen beautiful composition by joseph kling have a look at it again and you know you will be amazed at the beauty of it the concluding example in uh, this chapter is very similar to the composition of joseph kling we have the same idea but here the place of black queen is taken by black rook on h7 now this position is basically what we see uh, it's from a 13th century manuscript uh, which has been which is found in uh, which is basically called civis bonier or means written by uh, some unknown person it is uh, like known as citizens of bologna manuscript and i feel all this uh, manuscript like uh, have appeared in two manuscript are very similar to the mansubas which we had found in the arab world so uh, this basically appears to be one of the mansuba which has been carried forward from the arab chess and are well documented in uh, this manuscript so here it is fight to play now as can be seen in this position white has material advantage he has a rook but again the same problem black is threatening rook h8 checkmate and at the same time king is threatening the capture of the rook but here now white goes with the same idea he plays rook h5 fantastic move this move stops checkmate threat also threatens to you know win the rook of course rook on h5 does not have any protection so black here is like forced to capture the rook and once he captures this there follows rook a6 check and after king gets out of check say by moving to c5 skewer attack is brought about with r a5 check king to b6 and the rook is lost so this is how you see the skewer attack this concludes our uh, example from the learning position what you are now required to do is to solve the ensuing test positions in the book please start as usual with part 1 there are six problems and then later on you can come back to part 2 and part 3 when you feel that you are much much stronger and are able to see further uh, uh, further on the board and like if you have difficulty go through this chapter again go through this video again to understand as to how this pattern works i will be back with uh, the solutions of uh, all part 1 2 uh, and 3 in this series in the next lecture till then bye for now